We're ready whenever you are, Mayor. Good evening, and thank you for attending tonight's City Council meeting. For those who are attending remotely, the camera and the chambers is set up to show those attending in person tonight. The platform we are using has a raised hand feature. You will notice a picture of the hand in the upper right hand corner. When we reach a point in the meeting where the public has the opportunity to address council, you can click that button and be given your opportunity to address council. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Kathy, would you please call the roll? Mayor Skelly. Here. Councilor Dillabo. Here. Councilor Fisher. Here. Councilor Kennedy? Here. Councilor Powers? Here. Councilor Reese? Councilor Scamperly? Here. Quorum present. Uh, Councilor Reese is unable to attend tonight's uh, meeting due to family matters. He has to be excused. Is there a consensus to excuse yes. Councilor Reese? Yeah. Yes. 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 We have two presentations tonight. We will begin with Ogdensburg Land Bank Corporation, Chairman Jim Morrison. Good evening. Thank you for that introduction, Mayor. I, I know several of the members of City Council. I don't know everybody. So uh, I am Jim Morrison. I am the newly elected uh, chair of the Ogdensburg Land Bank. Our prior chairman, Phil Cosmo, who has been uh, in that role since 2018, uh, decided not to run for re-election, and so here I am. Um, I'm here to do the 22 annual highlight report. I think you folks have that. Mm -hmm. um, just I'll hit some some of the highlights from that, and uh, certainly we can answer questions or now or at a later point if you have them. Um, since this is the end of our fifth year of operation, since we've been here, we've acquired 23 properties. We have demolished uh, 14 uh, others, none in 22. We have completed three rehabilitations, uh, two of which were sold in 22, one was sold earlier. Uh, we have purchased two new single family homes through a very nice arrangement we have with BOCES where those modular homes are manufactured. We uh, purchased and placed one on Ogden Street, which sold, uh, and we purchased and placed one on Berry Street, which we are going to get back to this spring and, and hope to have on the market uh, you know, before summer. Um, as I said, we have done some side lots with buildings that have been taken down. Um, 11 of those have sold. We have three remaining in our inventory. Um, obviously hoping to sell those at any point. We've done notices to neighbors, which is typically where that uh, interest lies. Um, we have sold two properties in 2022. Uh, we sold a third one, the former um, synagogue on Green Street was sold in 2023. So that's not part of this report, but it did happen. Um, and again, the, the demolitions, I think it's important to note that while we have uh, our estimation is there's about $1.1 million in assessed value from properties that we have acquired, rehabbed and, and sold or, or new homes to put back on the tax rolls. Uh, the other side of that is cost avoidance with demolitions. It takes the liability off the city, the land bank takes it over um, and uh, that's cost avoidance for, for us as a, as a group. And so I think we work together quite well on those as we acquire them and then decide uh, whether they can be rehabbed or, or have to be demoed. Um, new construction currently, we have uh, in our inventory four buildable lots. Um, we are not currently under any kind of uh, construction, but we hope to maybe relook at that as funding allows a little later in the year. Um, we like to hold on to those because we do 
uh, part of you know what we want to do is to put up new structures and, and do new construction as opposed to just constantly demoing things. Um, looking ahead, a little bit of a snapshot. We have there's uh, two grants that we are currently involved with, phase one and two of uh, New York State uh, money that was made available through homes and community renewal. Uh, we were successful in phase one. We received $100,000 or will receive $100,000 that money has to be spent on administrative expenses. Our hope is that we will be able to contract with uh, some accounting help, um, as well as a project manager to allow someone to be out in the field to meet with contractors and, and speak for the speak for the board on projects that you know may be underway. So we think those are both um, viable options, and and we have started to look uh, for people to fill those roles. Phase two of the grant, which we have submitted an application for, we won't know for another couple months where that stands. That will allow us to acquire more properties, and we are um, <coughs> put together a list that will be uh, discussed with uh, the city, I'm sure, uh, as that becomes available, and, and we determine how much of those grants, if we get the whole thing or only part of that grant, that will obviously affect how much of those, how many of those properties uh, we would ask to to uh, to acquire. Um, again, I think that you know, since this uh, uh, inception of the, the land bank in 2018, uh, you know, we've we've really been a good partner for the city. I believe. Uh, I think we've we've been successful in putting properties back on the tax roll. We've been successful in uh, helping to get rid of blighted properties and ultimately allow uh, neighbors, homeowners in that area to to expand their their uh, lots or, or footprints. Um, and again, both through um, tax roll, you know, <coughs> properties back on the rolls, as well as the cost avoidance of properties that uh, we've taken over that, that you know, kind of come away from the city having to, to worry about with either liability or upkeep. Um, I think it's important that in the end, we continue to work together, the city and the land bank, because I think that's the only you know, the funding that originally came from New York State is not there anymore. Uh, the original type of funding, now it's more grants and, and things that we need to work together uh, to to be successful in. And I, and I hope that that will continue as we move forward. Uh, again, I just think it's such a, the land bank is such a win-win for the city. I just, I can't say that enough. So um, on in your packet, there is uh, the final page of that, I think, is a list of all of our properties that, that we have left if you have any questions on that it kind of gives you a little bit of a highlight of you know the the inventories that we that we currently have um i think the presentation is um it, the the actual report is a little fancier with some pictures and some things that of some things that we've done but the highlights i think have a little more of that detail on them i guess that that kind of uh hits the highlights if there's any questions i'd be happy to answer some or any I think you've done a tremendous job, tremendous job, and, and you are making a big difference, everyone involved in it. We appreciate that. The board, the board you know, takes its, uh, takes looking at these things very seriously, and, and uh, again, we do feel like we're a good partner. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it, it's an excellent program. It's one of the best things that we could have got. So, on the, on the phase two funding. Yeah. Is there a specific number that we've applied for for this bank? Uh, I, I believe it's 400,000. 400,000. So when I'm looking at this, this is a New York State program. There's not a lot of land banks in New York, correct? There's only like 13? Uh, yeah. Yeah. 25. 25. All right. I was thinking that or 25. Yeah. A lot of them, though, uh, uh, are attached to more countywide. You know, yeah. we're one of the few that's just a as small a footprint as the city. Most of them are countywide. So on 50 million in the state budget and in the past state budgets, do you think Augensburg is getting it? It's it's full. Yeah. I, I, I think it's a great program. I'll take anything we can get. Sure. I don't want to seem ungrateful, but do you think the state is equitable in, in dividing up the resources like that? Or? I mean, that's a great question. I, I think that as, you know, in any of these programs and anything that I've seen uh, in, in my career in a number of ways to involve the state, you know, it seems like more money goes to bigger areas. I think that's, you know, that, that that's an unfortunate reality. 
Yeah. But I but I don't think we're forgotten. I think that the couple times that I've been involved in uh, discussions with uh, some of the people that we uh, you know have have written grants with or or talked to at New York State uh, about these things that you know they seem to know who we are and what we're trying to do. So you know I, I think we're I think we're represented. You know again is it is it as good as it could be? Probably not. But I, I think if we can get four or five hundred thousand dollars a year for this little community, that's that's pretty good money. Yeah, I think I don't disagree with you. I think this, you know, the grants have to keep. Uh, it, it, I think it's a commitment by the state that that was the way they see these bank land banks being funded, as opposed to where the original money came from back in 2018. I think that was a one-time kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I think we will continue to try to work and be successful with those. And I, I think there are a lot of properties that we can you know, ultimately uh, you know, ultimately help with. I can, yeah, just take a ride. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What about for uh, instead of just blighted property? What if what if a homeowner wanted to have money to fix up the house or, or even a, a landlord? Is there money available through the land bank system? I, I don't think that's I don't think that's a you know land bank use. I, I, again, I'm not I, I'm not uh, quite as technically versed as in some of that, but I don't think I've ever seen. I mean, in essence, it really is the acquisition of properties once they work their way through through you folks, and and then we either you know try to demo rehab. I don't see we have we were able to use some funding to help one homeowner after a fire, but I think that was a particular chunk of money that we identified that was going to be sent back to the to the grantor because we weren't able to spend it, and we kind of came in at the last minute and tried to help that. And, and we were able to help that um, homeowner redo part of their home. They're not finished with it, but our part of it's done. So that was, like great yeah, I, I'm amazing. not sure those kind of funds are still there, but, you know, we're always looking at that kind of thing. Has the dynamics of what uh, we can use the money for changed since 2018? Uh, I thought part of it was also to keep homeowners in their home. Yeah, I think they. I, I I think some of it, and I think some of the funding in this grant is a little less designed to be like top to bottom rehab. They want more uh, us to come in and stabilize a property, and then perhaps with a contractor or you know somebody else to buy it and go from there. That's a good example of how we did the uh, you know the former uh, synagogue. You know, we we really only did one part of that building, the bottom, which is a wonderful space, and I think will be. A really nice home eventually uh, you know we weren't able to get to because our funding didn't allow it to go that far um, so it is it has changed a little bit but I still think for the most part um, you know they, they want to see they don't want to see all de demos there is you know we can still do some but I think you know new construction is is a piece of it but stabilization is a term we hear a lot more with this latest grant okay. Good. Excellent. good questions thank you Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. If, if I could, just I'd be remiss yep. if I didn't end by saying just how valuable Andrea Smith is to us. Mm -hmm. just, uh, we would be yes. flailing in the dark if it wasn't for her. So uh, my thanks to to Andrea and thank you for listening this evening. Well, and I thank think you. another important note is the fact that everyone who serves is a volunteer, correct? So this yes. is something that is done from individuals who truly want to improve the community. This is not a paid position. This is something that's truly volunteer. And in the world we live in, volunteers are very, very hard to come by. So if you could please convey from myself that, you know, the volunteers that are on the board are greatly appreciated and we do appreciate what's what's happening and moving the city forward. Thank you very much. That's nice to hear. Thank you. Thanks Absolutely. again. <laughs> Our Next presentation is the East David Street Preliminary Engineering Report. Good evening, Council Members. I'm uh, Matt Cooper with Barton LaJudas. It's my colleague, John Condino. Uh, the city retained our firm last year to begin an evaluation of the reconstruction and replacement of utilities on East David Street um, from Park to Hamilton. It's about a 3 tenths mile of street with uh, you know, some aging infrastructure on the ground there, um, some water mains that have had a history of breaking. Um, your uh, storm catch basins are still tied into your sanitary sewer there. Uh, with some reported backups into homes at times during wet weather conditions because of introducing storm water, water into your sanitary. So 
uh, our firm took, took a look at that, um, how we could lay out the new utilities within the street. Um, currently, you are water and sewer um, are within 10 feet of each other in several places along the street. Uh, health regulations require those to have a 10 foot minimum separation. So we're trying to get uh, water, sewer, stormwater, and the existing gas line within, you know, a fairly tight footprint. Uh, so we, uh, we looked at that layout and the, um, the construction efforts that would be required to achieve that. And, you know, most importantly, the conclusion of the evaluation was putting together a project budget for that. Um, we prepared a preliminary engineering report that walks you through our evaluation, uh, the different alternatives that we looked at with a conclusion of here are the costs and here are our recommendations on how to proceed. Uh, this is the important first step of undertaking um, an infrastructure project. You know, as you have gone through them prior, um, the quality of your engineering report um, sometimes dictates your success in achieving funding. This is going to be your instrument to sell your project to the funding agencies. And for this one, we would target primarily the water and sewer uh, funding sources. So those are typically New York State EFC. They have both water and sewer funding programs and USDA Rural Development has both water and sewer funding programs as you're probably aware of with your past capital projects. Um, with that, um, you know, we have a conclusion in the report and we identify potential funding sources, um, those scenarios of, well, if you, what if you get this grant and what if you get this financing? And we show several scenarios as, as this time we can't tell you what you will or won't get. We just want to present the different ways this may unfold and in the end, what that results in user rates. I mean, that's really where the rubber hits the road on these projects is what does it do to our user costs, to our city resident costs? So I put together a little cheat sheet for you um, that engineering part, if you took the time to read it, unless you fell asleep after page five or six or seven, <laughs> I, I made I made you the little cliff notes version here. Um, that really, I just extracted pretty much verbatim certain portions of the engineering report that I really just want to draw your attention to. So, kind of the alternative options that we have in there um, don't deviate significantly. I mean, bottom line is you need to replace the water, the sewer, and the stormwater. You know, that's really it, and reconstruct the street because replacing those within the street footprint is pretty much going to tear up the entire street. Um, so you would end up with a complete new reconstruction from the sub base up of the street. So on the water, we looked at two scenarios. When you're replacing the water main, are we just going to reconnect the service laterals right to it, right there? Or are we going to reconnect or replace the water service laterals from that main out both sides toward the homes, at least to the street right away. Because quite often it doesn't really, or most instances, it doesn't make sense to leave 50, 60, 70 year old water lines underneath a brand new street that you just had completely torn up. Um, but we did look at that just to see what the cost difference would be. Same with the sewer. We looked at those two scenarios. Do we just reconnect the sewer laterals to the new main? Or do you replace the laterals as well, at least out both sides to the street right away? The additional alternative we looked at with sewer, um, along with the laterals is, do we go with concrete curbing or granite curbing? Um, there was a desire to see what that cost difference is. So we show all those alternates up top, and then you know the next little table is us mixing and matching those options. So, <coughs> We match option one with one A and one with one B. So those are the options with water and sewer that did not include the service lateral replacements. And then we paired option two with two A and two with two B to show the pairing of the options for including the laterals. And as you can see, the capital costs range from uh, 4.29 million up to 4.47 million. Really the difference from the base to the top is less than 2%, um, really not a significant difference, which obviously led us to the conclusion of you replace the service laterals uh, for both water and sewer while you're doing this. 
And then the subsequent two tables below are the breakout of the water versus sewer. So some of it's a little bit splitting hairs, you know, which pavement is, is a result of the water project and which pavement replaces replacement is due to the sewer project. But we had to have a division. And we spoke with the funding agencies in preparing this um, about having both water and sewer in one engineering report. And they were fine with it, but they wanted to see the cost broken out in the end. So we would fund these as two separate projects. We would pursue water funding, and we would pursue sewer funding. In the end, we're gonna marry that funding into one project. But this shows you the breakout with you know, four different funding scenarios. So if you were to get zero grant and had to finance the entire water project, you're looking at about a $20 rate increase per EDU, equivalent dwelling unit. I don't know if you've encountered that acronym in your pet projects. That's representative of a single family household. Whereas, you know, if we can pile a couple grants on top of each other and get favorable financing, you may look at a rate increase as low as uh, $5.82 for single family household. And then down the sewer, you know, we expand out because there are a couple more grant programs to look at. Again, mixing and matching those, you're looking at a uh, rate increase anywhere from $10 to $29. For single family household. So at this point, what we would uh, what we would do in our course of action in a project of this nature is uh, once we have um, city comments on the report, or if there's anything you want us to explore further, any questions you have, any concerns with with how the report prepared, we would want to address those. And. Um, after that, we want to send those to the regulatory agencies. So on the Water Health Department and on the Sewer DEC, uh, those are the regulatory bodies that oversee municipal water and sewer, get any comments they have on the report. And then, but then we want to start pursuing the funding. Um, and we would want to try to secure as much as we could for you through all those programs. I mean, you know, throw it all at the wall and see what sticks. So I'd like to see, of course, as much funding as possible secured. Mm -hmm. uh, Question, does this cost include the cost of repaving substrates and sidewalks? And everything. <laughs> so, is there uh, any other grant money perhaps that would pick up some of that cost and lower the cost on, the, on the, each individual home? The EDU, I guess. Right, so it's an, an, a necessary incidental cost to the water and sewer, so it's actually being covered by the water and sewer funding. Um, there aren't, I mean, other than, um, you know, traditional CHIPS funding, there aren't really other separate grant programs for, for street reconstruction. That's another thing is too, is CHIPS has a separate uh, fund for stuff like this that we had to tear it off of. But if that's already included. So when I'm looking at, you know, a couple of the lower end scenarios, it still looks like about a, perhaps a 1.7 and a quarter million the taxpayers in the city and the city cost after these grants should we get the best case scenario grants um so on the water um best case scenario leaves you with i think the lowest financing we showed on there was about seven hundred forty eight thousand. yeah um and then there's another one with as little financing as five hundred sixty one thousand. okay yep that's on the sewer that was on the water. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. So the first finance, or the, I'm sorry, the second um, funding scenario column shows a, a New York State EFC loan of 748,000. Right. Yep. And then the fourth column shows the financing through USDA rural development of 561,000. Mm -hmm. And again, these are just scenarios mm -hmm. um, until we apply and find out if you're awarded or not awarded. These are just what ifs. Were you uh, successful in separating the, the sewer and the stormwater? Yeah, I mean, the, the scenario that we have laid out for the project would include separating them on East David Street. Nice. Correct. Yep. So any other issues that might cause? 
you know, this is a challenging time for us to uh, to estimate construction costs. Um, you know, what, what we've had to do in the last year with the continuing escalation of cost is, you know, we looked at it's the projection is has been going like this. So with a capital project of this nature, we know, you know, it's not happening this year with the process of designing it, um, getting it funded, putting it out to bid. You know, this could be a 2024, 2025 <clears throat> construction project. So we project that continued inflation out for a couple of years. Um, historically, we've done that projection at 3% per year. That wouldn't get you to where real costs are in the past few years. So, you know, we've looked at that continuing climb um, and made those level projections with pretty fat contingencies on projects. Just, we've seen a lot of project budgets blown up in the last couple of years. Getting, right? so yeah. I don't want all of a sudden, two years down the road, whatever council sitting here, you know, I thought it was going to cost this much and there's another $2.5 million. Right? Yeah. We've done our best to to pad this as much as possible under the recent uncertainty of costs. Um, now the good news is our, you know, in the last three, four months of opening bids, we have seen that start to plateau off. So instead of the continuing climb, it does seem to be stabilizing. So if we can get loans for this amount, it might even reduce the cities. Potentially. Right. So in this project, this, does everything run to Patterson Street in terms of the sewer? Because it's Patterson, Patterson Street's the, the latest mm -hmm. uh, modern, I guess, if you would, uh, sewer run. Correct. So everything runs to Patterson Street. It does. Okay. I'm fairly certain. It's from both sides. Mm -hmm. So everything should be fairly easy to tie into there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we were able to gather all the existing information on inverts and manholes to make sure we had you know enough elevation to tie everything in. And Because we've had some issues with that. I don't know if it's this particular area. I think there's more. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering if we're going to overtax that system. I'm sure you guys have looked at that. At Patterson. Yeah. I mean, if, from Patterson down, I mean, you, you, it seems you have sufficient capacity and everything that's constructed in place. Okay. Well, it should be better if you <clears throat> taking some of the storm water out from that area. So that should help. I'll help believe that. Yeah. The existing manholes, yeah. I didn't see any in our evaluation that appeared to be to that condition. I don't know if there's nothing of that severe condition. Yeah, I mean, we would do soil borings. Once we get to design, if you, you know, continue to proceed, um, once we start the design process, we would do soil, soil borings to make sure we understand as much as we can about the subsurface conditions. And do you see any hidden conflicts like gas? In, in spots, it was a little tight in, in the layout. Um, I mean, it appears we can keep all the proper separations and make everything fit within the street. In a, in a perfect... <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, in a perfect world, if you're looking at a project date of a year and a half to two years out, how quickly do you think we'd be able to turn around and find out how quickly we get the financing? Um, you would pursue. Um, what's the time? What's the time frame? I suppose if we were to apply next week, or well, I don't want to step on Andrew's toes, but whenever Andrew could get him out the door. That's a challenging question to answer, only because I don't know what this project's success will be with funding. We have projects out of the gate that are awarded everything they applied for, for grants and loans the first year. I have projects that have been applying literally for 10 years, trying to get to that threshold where they're competitive enough with other projects to receive grants and loans. I mean, the average is probably two to three years. Yeah. I mean, the wheels turn slowly, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. I, know. I, 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 I just Nails. curious. As well. Glacial speed at times. I guess that's it for questions. Thank you very much.
a great evening. Thank you. Uh, we do not have any public hearings tonight, so this brings us to personal appearance. At this time, anyone attending in person would like to address council, please come down to the podium. You have five minutes. Is there anyone attending remotely? I do not see any hands raised. Uh, and this brings us to correspondence. I believe we have one letter. Yes, Mayor. Dear Ogdensburg City Council members, I am writing this letter to make an offer on the property located at 420 Lafayette Street. As you know, it has been vacant for some time and has received no bids or interest at the past two auctions in which it was featured. I would like to offer $8,000 for this property and would be interested in hearing your thoughts on the matter. Please feel free to contact me via letter, email, or phone. Respectfully, Mr. Walter Bracey. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, next, we have our consent agenda that the claims is enumerated in General Fund Warrant number 6-2023, the amount of $604,526.64, and library warrant number 6-2023, in the amount of $0, and capital fund warrant number 6-2023 in the amount of $65,345.97 and community development fund warrant number 6-2023 in the amount of $75.98 and community renewal fund warrant number 6-2023 in the amount of $0 as audited be in the same hereby I order so move. Second. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Mayor Scully? Yes. Councillor Dillabaugh? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Powers? Yes. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Approved. We have one appointment tonight, and I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Kearney uh, Copeland to a three-year term on the Zoning Board of Appeals, term to begin March 27th, 2023, and then March 27th, 2026. I so move. Second. <clears throat> Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Councilor Powers? Yes. Councilor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scali? Yes. Councilor Delabaugh? Yes. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Approved. And this brings us to item for council action. Our first item of business will be read by city manager. Uh, it's bill number 37 on the top. Yeah. Um, I would like to call on uh, to uh, bring a resolution to call for a public hearing uh, and a notice regarding the ordinance amendment of chapter 209 of the Ordinanceville Municipal Code. And this is a call for a public hearing uh, and a public notice to amend the chapter 209 section. 54 schedule uh, 27 time limit parking on of the Ogdensburg Municipal Court. Second. Uh, Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Powers? Yes. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scally? Yes. Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Approved. Our next item of business will be read by Director of Planning and Development, Andrea Smith. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is a resolution authorizing new fees at the Elsa M. Lusich Pool. <laughs> Whereas the city of Ogdensburg operates the municipal pool for use by the public and whereas the city of Ogdensburg City Council establishes the fees for recreation activities and use of facilities 
And whereas after a review of the rate schedule by staff and the Recreation Commission, there is a recommendation to increase fees as outlined in the attached table for the 2023 season. Uh, this is the same table that was submitted when we addressed the fees for the Dubisky Visitor Center. Uh, it was included with packet and it takes into account the 2023 approved budget, specifically the revenue line associated with the pool. I'll move that. I'll second. Okay, go ahead. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scally? No. Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Powers? Yes. Approved. Our next item of business will be again read by Andrea Smith. This is a resolution to accept the East David Street Preliminary Engineering Report. Whereas the City of Ogdensburg has received funding through a 2021 Consolidated Funding Applications process, specifically New York State Community Development Block Grant Program in the amount of $50,000. And whereas the purpose of this grant was to complete a preliminary engineering report for East David Street Reconstruction Project, now, therefore, be resolved that the Ogdensburg City Council accepts the PER as presented at the March 27th, 2023 City Council meeting by Barton and LeJudas and authorizes the city manager to submit all necessary documents to close out CDBG grant 836CP61. I'll second that. <clears throat> Kathy, would you please call the roll? Mayor Skelly? Yes. Councillor Delaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Powers? Yes. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Approved. And that brings us to old business. Does anyone have any old business? You know, Gar was here at the last meeting uh, explaining uh, a little bit that assessments are coming. People are a little, people are a little frightened. Uh, by by what's going to happen here with the citywide evaluation, and so I'm wondering if there's an easy way, without burdening anything too much, uh, to say if, if if this is our our new re rebound, then this would be the new tax rate if if the budget were to stay exactly the same, the the, the amount of revenue. Is that possible to do that in a fairly easy way? Yes. Okay. Are you a gentleman? Yeah, I'm the. Uh, oh, all right. Oh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Come on up. Yeah. So we would just. Uh, <laughs> the hope was always that if the assessments went up, we could lower the tax rate. Oh, and perfect. yeah, what you're asking is really a simple. That's right. Simple, I'm simple question. There's a taxable value that you had last year. Right? Mm -hmm. There's a budget that you had that creates a tax rate. Right. If the the new numbers when they come out from GAR, there's going to be a new assessed value for the city, a new taxable value for the city. Right. You just simply divide that into that budget, and you have a very simple answer. That's what I was hoping. And I think the city mm -hmm. needs to, needs to get that message out to people. Uh, so you know, if somebody, let's say, if somebody's Assessment went up twenty thousand dollars. By the way, this would be the new, the new city tax rate. Should should our preliminary report stand? You know? Exactly. I we don't know what the new budget would be though. At this point. Right. Yes. Yes. At that yeah. time. But I'm just saying, if we were to apply that to like let's say this year's numbers, uh, you can you I, can do that. I think it's it's prudent for the city to do that because I noticed when I watched. Uh, on uh, Channel 7 News, the, the Clayton announcement of the new assessments. Uh, people were up in arms, it seemed. And I don't, I don't know the steps that they took to, to kind of settle people, but I, I don't, I'd like to do, do that and take a look at this cautiously before we just go tell everybody oh. what the new assessment is. Things like that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So. And I'll, I'll address more of that. I guess I'm coming up later here in item 17. Yep. 
discussion. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But, uh, but the answer to your question is, yeah, it's actually it's a simple. We can adjust the city's budget, but the the new the tax increase, the reassessment, in, an increase in that would uh, be an increase in school taxes and and county taxes, okay. and those are the big ones. I mean, the right. school. Yeah. What you're you're what you're looking forward to is that hopefully the budgets are staying the same, and with the increase in assessment and taxable value, the tax rates will be going. That's what you're hoping. Uh, yeah, that's that was always the hope that the the city I mean, would follow exactly that. Yes. Yeah. Who's trying to drive down the constitutional tax rate? Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it, the 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 issue is that um, you know it's going to be a, a real burden if the if the school um, doesn't you know bring their tax rate down and as well they have a tax gap the same you know as other. Yeah. Too. yeah. But with the reassessment, the school levy be should more. decrease as well. Mm -hmm. They have the same exact scenario. It's a matter of what. That I, I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know school levies, to be very honest with you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Is there any other old business? And this brings us to new business. Does anyone have any new business? Um, oh, yes. So, I would like to, I have three items in, to be discussed today. Uh, on behalf of the city of Ogdensburg, I would like to recognize and applaud the exemplary service of Katie Lauder, next year, a small business owner, and Joe Sovey of the Ogdensburg Fire Department for their quick thinking and tireless efforts in preventing a potential fire in Richard Levinson's home today. And that was a testament to their commitment to the safety and well being of our community. Katie's keen sense of smell and prompt communication with the Ogdensburg Fire Department, along with Joe's diligent investigation, led to the discovery of not just one, but six birds stuck in a water heater ventilation pipe and their persistence. Uh, and dedication to ensure that there, are, there were no other potential hazards in the home were very truly commendable. So we are very grateful to their selfishness and bravery, which undoubtedly saved the lives and property of, and I want to recognize their, their contributions to the city. Uh, and the next item I want to do, uh, speak about is I'm very humbled to have been chosen as the city manager for the city of Ogdensburg by unanimous consent of the city council. It is a great responsibility to be here and to be entrusted with the task of improving the city, and I take it very seriously. Unfortunately, there has been an ongoing debate surrounding the hiring of firefighters since I took office. I understand the Ogdensburg Fire Department Union has a contract that runs till December 2025, and this contract is quite lucrative. However, after carefully considering the fiscal impact in both short and long term, as well as the morale of the staff, I have decided to direct Fire Chief Ken Stahl to hire two firefighters immediately. I realize this decision may be controversial, given the past discourse between the city council and the union. Nevertheless, I firmly believe that this move is necessary to improve the staff morale, enhance fire safety, and ultimately save the overtime and minim minimum staffing costs. I humbly request that the Ogdensburg Fire Union consider this decision as a goodwill gesture and take it into account during the future negotiations with the city. I am committed to working together with all stakeholders to build a better future for the city of Ogdensburg. And the next item is to form a citizen staff force. And I would like to request the council's approval to set up a citizen staff task force uh, to enhance the social economic development 
and develop a comprehensive plan uh, that is an inclusive process with citizens' participation. And I would welcome any discussion on that. I think that is a fantastic idea and something, especially in the past several years, we have seen a dramatic increase in community involvement and a variety of individuals looking to become involved in the community. Um, I think it would be great to do like an informational meeting. Um, people that are interested can come find out what you're looking for in a member of that type of organization, what the commitments are um, and things like that. And then there could be a selection process. But I think that's that's a great a great thing to get, get started here. Yeah, there has been some com com uh, community development plans done in the past from discussing with this com uh, community members and the feedback I got was there was not much of citizens participation and input. So I wanted to open up to the public to uh, be able to, for the citizens to come and for them to make give us the direction because they are the ones who like to see which direction we want to proceed with. There are a lot of people that have moved from outside of the U uh, different parts of the US as well as people who are living here. We understand that there is a, a growing population that uh, that that is aging as well as there is a significant amount of people that's moving town because they don't have certain opportunities. So to bring that community development aspect as well as to bring economic development, I thought having a comprehensive plan would help for the future of the city. Very good move. I think we, we absolutely have to have an economic development plan. We do have a lot of participation, as Nicole was saying. We had a large citizens group and business group organize uh, some some fishing tournaments here, and and our fisheries are just awesome here in St. Lawrence. And uh, I'd like to bring that back. I'd like to bring uh, put us back on the map with these with these tournaments, these fishing tournaments. The thing about Augsburg, it's right in the middle, you know, of the St. Lawrence again. They want to come here. They they want to be welcomed here, and I think that's just one of the things that we need to do. Uh, we have some citizens in this town that go out of their way. Uh, Rhonda Rothell, I mean, just just to throw a pat on her back, she does so much to try and uh, get this city going. I'm sure she'd be glad to participate and, uh, and give advice. I mean, she's got a lot of experience uh, with with that. So. There has been tremendous uh, risk. I mean, at this point, even people have volunteered their time on this kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I'm really appreciative of the community that, you know, around surrounds me. I'm very thankful and I'm really blessed to have people uh, in Ogdensburg that, that wants to make a change, to pay change and make, make this a better place. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Everybody wants to see this town kind of better. So, let's do this. Um, and at the announce or we're on the items for discussion? That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, and this brings us to items for discussion and we'll begin with uh, Police Chief Mark Kearns. Good evening. Um, good evening, Chief. Here to speak about the 2023 COPS grant, which has uh, recently opened up for application. We applied for this grant last year and we did not receive it. Um, I'm making speculation on why we didn't receive it. Well, my thoughts are uh, simply that we asked for too many officers. We asked for four um, and we asked for four because you can ask for up to 20% of your current staffing. So at 19, roughly that's four officers. Uh, by looking at the awards of other communities in New York State, the closest in our size was the County of Livingston Sheriff's Office, and they're they're much larger than us. The Sheriff's Office Road Patrol is 32 members, and they received three officers. So uh, that's uh, roughly quick math: 10% uh, of their their staff. So uh, I, if we do apply here, I will probably apply for two officers. I think that's much more reasonable for the grant. That's uh, 
seems to be in line with what the awards are that were received. And what COPS stands for is Community Oriented Policing. And as I dug into this grant last year, uh, I really dug into strategic partners and what are these officers, these additional officers to your current staffing um, going to do with these strategic partners and what are they going to do uh, for your community other than just um, be extra officers? Yes, they take into account your current economic uh, situation. Um, I will provide all that data. I can provide council minutes. I can provide uh, everything showing our hardships that we have here and that we financially need these officers. But I really have to have a driving force of a community relationship with um, some other services within our, our community and what these additional officers are going to do. And thinking long term of the grant, I have to have some sort of um, data that I can actually grasp and report back to the grant to say what these officers are doing. Um, we work with human services programs throughout this city on a daily basis and in some informal conversations with a lot of these services uh, we're already doing these types of programs it's just documenting that we're doing the, these things um, such as uh, dealing with those that are in crises whether it be uh, mental health issues homelessness or dealing with substance use issues uh, we're really avoiding arrests at all costs and trying to point uh, these subjects that need our help into situations of uh, obtaining some sort of a human service services and it's just documenting those and continuing to develop these partnerships so um, that's what i would like to do um, with any grant it comes down to finances right what's the city's um, cost going to be if we were awarded such a grant um, the cops grant will pay for up to three quarters of the starting salary and fringe benefits uh, of an officer for three years of time, um, but that's capped at $125,000 over that three year period. Um, at our current salary rates for new officers and for what we're paying for insurance, we would roughly be paying $31,000 a year for, for each officer. So. But if we didn't have a grant, a new hire is roughly $75,000 a year to include uh, all their health costs and all fringe benefits and salary. So um, we're not quite going to get a three quarters pay, but we're gonna get roughly a 60% pay out of this grant if we were awarded. So if uh, we're awarded two officers, of course, then we're paying 62,000 a year instead of 150,000. So. And then the catch is, if you want to call it a catch, after your three years of the grant paying for these officers, you have to maintain these officers for a period of 12 months afterwards. So, and I don't have to immediately hire these officers. I have uh, a five-year time period to hire these two officers, or if we're awarded two, because they take into account that there's recruiting that has to be done. There might not be a valid civil service list. It takes a while to do background checks. Uh, and the hiring process itself takes takes time as well. So you have a five-year period and they'll pay for these, again, for three years of time. Um, and these have to be additional officers um, to our current staffing. Um, they will allow for rehires such as if we did lay, we did cut a position in our, our budget last year, we did lay off it. Um, not an officer by name, but we did cut a position so we could put in to replace that position. That would bring our staff into 20, and then an additional officer on top of that would back to 21 officers uh, if the grant was approved. And again, if the grant was approved, we wouldn't know uh, the result of that till approximately October of this year. So that basically sums up the grant. Uh, the due date for the application, I believe is May 8th, May 6th or May 8th, I'll have to check on that, but. We got a little over a month to, to finish up here. 
and I have to really uh, key in again on those strategic partnerships, um, have these organizations uh, be willing to write a letter of recommendation for us, um, as I have with, with them in the past, so I'm sure they, they'll, they'll do the same for us. Last year, we had letters of recommendation from both our U.S. Senators, um, as well as uh, Elise Stefanik, uh, both our um, then uh, State Assemblyman, Mark Walczyk, now our Senator, uh, Patty Ritchie as well. Um, Mayor Skelly wrote a letter as well in support of this last year. So again, the more letters we can get uh, in support, the better. Uh, I can attach all of that. I can attach all our, our, our meeting notes from here, showing our economic issues as well. And we'll give it another shot. I don't mind doing the work on the matter. I feel a little bit more comfortable this year than I did last year since we dove, dove into it more. We don't need a resolution on the matter of this, but I'm sh it would sure help to have a council support to be united front asking uh, the Department of Justice to uh, pay for two of our officers for, for a three-year time period. What about a letter from the Sheriff's Department? Sean Brown was here a while back talking about our partnership. Sure that would be I'm certain that the uh, Sheriff would write a letter of support. Oh, can, we got a, mine. can we get a resolution on the next agenda? <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Yeah, right. Any questions? Thank you, Chief. All right, thank you. Uh, next uh, is off-season uses for the Lockwood Arena. And Recreation Director Mackenzie Cole will do that. Yep, I just wanted to introduce our Recreation Director Mackenzie Cole. And so this kind of came at a request of council to talk about uses from uh, in the arena, in the sort of off season between when the ice comes out and when we start to see uh, uses in the late spring and summer. Uh, but it also came from our director directly who was thinking about how to make better use of the facility. So Mackenzie Cole is going to give you uh, an update on her thoughts as well as the conversations that she's had with the Recreation Commission. How's it going, guys? Okay. So my idea is I would like to have pickleball in the Lockwood Arena um, until we can get everything ready for the nice weather. Um, I would like to do that on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, I am going to charge a fee. I did look around at other areas around here that do offer this in the off-season as well. And at Potsdam, they do as it. <clears throat> they charge $3. Um, for two hours, um, and I would like to charge five dollars for three hours. Um, at this time, that's just the dates and um, days and times that we did discuss in the Rec Commission. We would obviously move forward if there is way more interest in it, um, <clears throat> but that's obviously going to have to come back from the public to let me know. We also right now are using it as the youth lacrosse um, they are using it for practice time until they can get on the fields and until the fields are ready for us to maintain for them for the season. If you guys have any, have any other ideas for me to use for the Lockwood, I would definitely take them into consideration. Um, any promotional events? For recreation uh, in general? Uh, you know, small concerts, things like that uh, throughout the summer. It's stuff I can look into. Mm -hmm. um, I just know in the summertime, it, it does get very hot because it's yeah, not yeah. insulated in there. Uh, um, so that is one big concern I do have, though, in the summertime. What about do doing things like that in, in the parks? In the parks? Absolutely. I'd look you know, Norwood it. has that concert series. Yep. They, they do it every week, I think. It was, and I think it's like a weeknight, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they partner with, uh, I believe, the chamber with their uh, village because uh, they did look into this last year as well for uh, certain bands and all that that would come and play. Yeah, County Chamber, can you, can you help us? I can talk to Laura. I think we have local some. bands right here in Oxford. Mm -hmm. like, I've contacted a few and they would be interested in doing this. Mm -hmm. Just anything to create more activity here, you know, during the summer. I agree. Any other <laughs> questions? Yes, Mackenzie. Mm -hmm. uh, we discussed this earlier on. Uh, 
about the Lockwood Arena being used all year round. Mm -hmm. There are lots of, uh, I have received some uh, interest from, from Canadian uh, companies, uh, schools that want to come, come and use our facility at a fee. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned that there are some risks. Why we couldn't uh, yep. do it? So, if you, for the record, if you can just say the reasons so that we we can think that into a, a future capital improvement project. Yeah, we would definitely get the building re-insulated um, to maintain it. Um, our compressor now, um, Shane can talk more about the compressor too if you guys need that. Uh, but it it's not going to be capable enough to handle the warm weather if we did do that with the building not being insulated. Um, it sometimes it gives us problems during with the ice even on so it would definitely be a huge cost if we wanted to go forward with this um just with the building in general and the compressor to stabilize all that so what you say is the compressor would is not is you, uh, reaching its uh, useful life no. yes and we've we've talked about this in previous budgets and all that too okay. thank you yeah no problem thank you Next, uh, we're, we have 420 Lafayette Street and our city manager, Dean Moari. That is correct. I do. Thank you. So, um, this is regarding the 407, um, 420 Lafayette Street. So this property was on the auction, um, and uh, it was priced at forty-five thousand dollars. And it doesn't appear that the re it, the offer that has been made on the table for eight thousand um, is reasonable. So we propose it go back to the next to be bundled into the next auction. Also, in having discussion with the county in recent times. They suggested that we could we could bundle these properties that does not get sold at the local auction into the county's auction, then so that there is a more wider exposure and people from outside can also have a, a, a shot at it. So therefore, I I would strongly suggest that this is a very low of, of an offer we cannot accept, and also because of the uh, public the public interest, we have to to, to uh, bid this. So uh, we could definitely look at the assessed value again, but it came at forty-five thousand, and the offer on the table is eight grand, which does not really pan out. Have you had a discussion with the person in, the in terms of any plans that that person might have? I did not speak to directly about uh, about what the plans and um, about this particular individual, but I did. Corresponded over the mail, just let me know that this was not, this, even if we want to go forward, it has to go through a formal process of being able to be bid by other people, that they cannot just come straight up and, you know, offer the money. And money. So I didn't want to dis, um, entertain that negotiation before before we even get uh, a, give a fair chance at, to the other bidders that were be, inter, who would have been interested in, in this property. That it's possible it can be sold uh, straight up because it's been through the tax auction twice. Mm -hmm. and so I think after that, the city can sell it. Whether or not we wanted to make a counter, counter offer or not is another question. But I would suggest personally, uh, and I'm only one of seven here, that uh, you, you have discussion maybe with, with the person. Sure. Talk about it later back. Sure, I, I would definitely reach out to them and get, get feedback from that. But looking at the acreage, I don't have the uh, the numbers with me. But that amount of money, that acreage is pretty pretty large. Yeah, yeah. yeah. chunk of a place. So I mean, we were hoping to get a development there yeah. uh, through an RFP process, and things like that, which I fully support and, and always did support, rather than just auction it off or sell it mm -hmm. to somebody who doesn't have it. And I know that. That things have changed. Sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I will definitely reach out to them and try to get some feedback on that. Thank you. 
Next, we have uh, our city assessor who will discuss uh, grievance day procedures. Back to a hot topic. <laughs> it's a hot topic. As we get closer, it's going to get hotter. Yes, it will, and it's going to—it's coming soon. <laughs> uh, I do want to apologize that I was not here at the GAR uh, meeting. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys don't know, but I do work for two other municipalities mm -hmm. uh, in St. Lawrence County, and I had to be at a Oswegatchie Town Board meeting. So I apologize. Um, before we get to the grievance procedure, I just want to backtrack a little bit and talk about where GAR is right now. And those notices are, are very quickly going to be upon us. Um, we're going to be mailing them out from City Hall. Um, it will probably be very, very early April now, is what I'm told. So everyone in the city will be getting a change of assessment notice for each parcel. Um, GAR will instruct them on how they can challenge that assessment with the change of assessment notice, um, what information they can present and who they can call and they can set up meetings with GAR directly. That will probably take the full month of April for GAR to get back to us. At that time, GAR is going to give us um, secondary notices that will go out. So if just for example, Mayor Skelly came, he got his change of assessment notice on a property. He came in and disputed one of them with the GAR associates he would get one letter back. Um, maybe it was changed, maybe it wasn't changed. But at that point, at the end of April, we'll have a very good indication of how many people GAR has spoken to, how many people GAR has made changes to their assessment on, um, and that will give us some good information going forward with the Board of Assessment Review. Now, you, um, the City Council does appoint, appoint the Board of Assessment Review. We currently have four members on that. Um, they will be meeting the on June 13th this year, which is the second Tuesday in June. Um, they'll be meeting, they'll have an organizational meeting at 1 p.m. And then they'll hear complaints between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. and 6 to 8 p.m. At this point in time, I have no idea if all the, uh, all the complaints will be heard at that time. If not, the board would adjourn the meeting and hear complaints at a later date. So to have your complaint heard by the Board of Assessment Review, you would need to complete Form RP 524. It's available on our website. You would have to have that in by 8 p.m. on June 13th this year. The Board will adjourn after that if there's more hearings to be heard. Um, once the Board then hears all the Here's all the complaints. They would send out letters, uh, decision letters. Yes, your assessment was changed. Here's what it was changed to, or there's no, there's no change. Beyond that, there is a, a third alternative, and Gar did mention this at their presentation, that they, um, a homeowner, such as Mr. Mayor Skelly, could petition a small claims assessment review hearing, and he could file paperwork, and that, that hearing would probably be heard in probably or late August, September, and maybe even as late as October. Um, so that, that covers the courses of challenges that we have. Um, it, once the letters go out, the secondary letters go out after the meeting with GAR, once again, we'll have a better idea of how many potential complaints we'll have. Um, I generally put together a list, a time frame, and as appointments, as complaints come in, I assign time slots for people. Um, going to need to meet with the Board of Assessment Review to determine if that's what they want to do, if there's certain dates that they have open that they want to reconvene the hearings on. Um, a lot up in the air right now, but that is the general process. I think it's very important that we throw out that what would the tax rate be? that first round of what would it have been actually <laughs> what i think you're saying yeah yes. yeah. yeah i mean obviously it, it'll change it'll change after the first round. yeah based on last year's budget or the current budget right yeah yeah you know uh, i think without that you know the city could be up in arms and oh, a lot of time better perspective of what it means this assessment this is new assessed value on the property maybe less apt to have so many people come and try to agree. Right. I mean, one of the ideas here is you want to get more value of your 
property without having your taxes skyrocket, right? I mean, and, and people have fought them, I think, for years, fought their their assessment because they don't they don't want to pay the, the high tax. There is a preconceived notion that my assessment mm -hmm. went up, so therefore my right. taxes are going to go up. So, and that's not always true, especially under a, with a revaluation right. where everyone else is being for, for the whole city. Right? Yes. So I think, yeah, we're in agreement on that. But that, that has to be a part of the understanding. I think it should go out with the with the, the new assessed values. So this this is what the tax rate would look like should we we can put that up on the website or we can put that yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So that they people can compare it to what get a real but, idea of what's gonna happen. Yeah, I, I think what you're alluding to is just because the assessment my assessment went up doesn't necessarily mean my taxes exactly. are going up. Exactly. Would it be possible to get an email on who is on the Board of Assessments? I know you said they're council appointed, it's, but I have no idea who it is. Yes, it is right on the website. Is it? Um, okay. Hi, Dale. Because I'm like, you said appointed by the council. I'm like thinking to myself, I have no idea. I did ask Kathy to jock the <laughs> I will look for that's who fine. was on it and she directed me to the website. Of course, so Kathy it, is right the there. answers to everything. And so. there is an opening on that um, board. Be a good idea to have another An person appointment. Appoint, appointment. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to you, uh, City Council, to appoint that person. I can't imagine anybody of the citywide assessment coming up that's going to jump up and down and raise their hands. On that. Uh, one more question. In turn, I'm sorry, Nicole, did I cut you? Nope, I'm good. Uh, comparables. I know Gar said. Gar does did a lot of research probably a year ago, based. Uh, on sales comparisons, um, they look, they reevaluate, they uh, check all the data on the sales to make sure that they have the good sales that they're using. Is there going to be a process where uh, it's it's a simple process for the citizens of this town to look at those comparables? The, yes, uh, Gar has a website for it. Oh, excellent. Yeah. All right, excellent. So going back to the grievance day, uh, June thirteenth, we give fifteen minute time slots. To grieve, is that correct? Uh, historically, we have given 15 minutes during a revaluation. Uh, probably ask the board to lower that to 10, um, just to hear more people. And anybody that does not have an appointment would not be able to come and do their grievances. Um, is that correct? Anyone that has not filed the complaint form okay. will not be able to have a grievance heard by the board. And it's that once, form was, what was it's it? the RP 524. Okay. It's the complaint on real property. And that the application that needs to be completed and given to the board for them to hear the complaint. Kathy, is there any way to back all that information? Could we do like a bullet and like have that pushed out on like the text alerts? Um, Absolutely. That way watch. people know where to find it on the city website. Because I know a lot of people do have the text alerts now, and that technology works really great for people. They can just click on it, it brings them right to the city website. So just ease of use, any part of this process we can expedite for people. I think more people will utilize it. Great idea. Thank you. And, and also, uh, Council, uh, Councilman Kennedy, uh, we are going to also send a press release about this. Perfect. Them. And also, we would like to look at multiple channels of being able to set up their appointments so that we don't have a crash of people on that day. Right. Yeah, having a mob of people is at one point that it's not a good idea right and everybody deserves their well 10 minutes 15 minutes. right everybody you know what i mean there, you don't yeah. everybody you know everybody takes a lot of pride in their home and it's very important to them anytime anything regarding finances or something could be viewed as a hardship you know you sometimes don't always get the best sides of people so i think anything we can do to prepare them and prepare the expectations of what could come out of that meeting it would be beneficial sure uh, while you're here one of the complaints I've been getting a lot lately, and uh, I believe Andrea told me this is, is state regulated, is the this, this senior citizens tax break. Uh, have you been getting complaints about citizens? Um, I have not been getting complaints, but the income limit is very low right now. It's 18000 Right. And that's a gross household income. So anyone receiving fifteen hundred dollars a month social security is basically over the, right. the income limit. Going forward, there is a uh, law, New York State um, law, going forward that will 
change that to adjusted gross income. I don't know if that'll pass. I I don't know where we're going with this this. Uh, well, it's exemption. interesting because Social Security just got it. They got 8.7 percent, and yeah. yes, I denied quite a few people this year and, because uh, of that. So I've been getting the complaints that they're losing that, and I guess it's it's quite substantial on property taxes. I'm not sure. Uh, 50 percent on it's city taxes. Pretty substantial. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, and that's so a yes or no. It's 50 percent. Yeah. So they get more money on one hand, which isn't even close to I'm sure the 50 percent they're losing by paying the city taxes. I don't know if we. Can, posted on that or, or whatever. I don't know, you could, uh, I mean, maybe think some point in time, you know, a senior citizen, they get a discount on their water rates or something, you know, Yeah. just applied with through that exemption. It could, do it we could have be, the power to do that here? You'd have to create a law for that. Okay. Yeah. Just to kind other, of make up for it a little bit because- you know, Other municipalities do do that and utilize like the enhanced our exemption code right. or reduced water rates. Oh, okay. That's a great idea. Thank you. Also, uh, I think that this is so, uh, this is uh, this concerns the properties that were transferred within the year, and some of them who are veterans, they had those tax credits. Mm -hmm. And are we capturing those credits? When we we are not. When I, I uh, I'll backtrack a little bit, a little bit farther back to my days uh, when I was an assessor in Monroe County. There's a thing called omitted taxes. So if I buy a house from a senior citizen um, who's who had a wartime or combat vet mm -hmm. exemption, that would be relevied by date of purchase. Um, that is not happening up here in St. Lawrence County. It becomes a very confusing, complex issue because the person gets their tax bill and it has that veterans, that senior citizen exemption on it and their taxes are hardly anything. Then I go and I relevy those taxes, so the next year, they're not $1,000, they're $3,500, and then they call their upset. And once we finally get back on track with the taxes, they were low and now they're high because the exemption was relevied, then it goes to the next year where the bank calls the person or, or just sends them an escrow deficiency statement, mm -hmm. So we're like three years down the road in this right. problem. And um, I'm not saying it's being swept under the rug, but uh, it's a very confusing issue. And uh, just to do away, and, and you're not collecting hundreds of thousands of dollars on this. This is uh, very small amounts of money. Uh, I did talk to Real Property the other day and not one assessor in St. Lawrence County does the omitted taxes any longer. Mom. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, funding options for capital improvement projects with uh, Director of Planning and Development and our City Comptroller. So this evening, if for items of discussion, we've provided you with two resolutions for discussion and hopefully action. Um, one is a resolution to do a ban for the improvements here associated with the city hall roof and then the other alternative is to use fund balance uh, for the city hall roof as well as the other projects many of which we've discussed uh, in the past month or so including the Dubisky center sprinkler repair the security system that's needed at the Police Department as well as HVAC improvements at the Police Department and gearing up for what we know we will need to do in the next in the next year uh, the design and engineering for the replacement of the fire department roof collectively uh, with those improvements with the City Hall roof uh, replacement project uh, we estimate the cost to be about five hundred thousand dollars so you have two resolutions. Again, one is specifically for the ban um, for the roof, although we can amend that to include other items. And then the other is to use fund balance. Um, I did just want to bring it to council's attention that Angela, our comptroller, did give a presentation on where she estimated we would be closing our 2022 year. 
she gave that presentation uh, earlier this month. And slide two of that presentation is her are her estimates for where uh, we estimate the fund balance to end, uh, and that was an estimated balance of 4.4 million. Taking into account that we used 1.2 million in fund balance to balance the 2023 budget, uh, we would estimate that there's approximately at the beginning of 2023, uh, 3. Point, I'm sorry, uh, 1.3.2 million dollars available. Um, so that's sort of the high level. I think if you have further detailed questions on the fund balance and the finances, I'm, uh, th those may be better suited for Angela. But we wanted to get uh, action by council. And I guess the last point I would make is if there is a desire to do the ban for the roof or the combination of projects, that does require five affirmative votes. Uh, even though it is on your agenda, it just requires five votes. Uh, the, the use of fund balance would require four affirmative votes. Personally, I think we should combine it all into a ban and try and get some things set up there. That's my initial initial briefing on that as well. I'm all for more if we got the money. Just use it. I'm not going to stick it on other councils down the road. And as I don't know if anybody's done the math on even what the ban would be, or even if you did it as a um, a serial bond like or ban like some of these were on that were was used, what the interest rates would be and what you'd end up actually paying for what you're bonding out for um you, there's a lot of bonding obviously what's being said tonight as far as the potential projects that are going to be needed and uh we just bonded for this wastewater treatment plant we don't even know where the ready project's going that already went 1.4 million higher anyway just because we didn't do our due diligence and go in the water with a diver um i'm not bonding at this point for and i'm not definitely not going to put it all together Sorry. I don't think there's going to be, uh, you're going to get five votes. I, I just, I can't see taking all our savings and spending it on these projects. We have a new city manager here and we need to get, get some things settled. Personally, I'm for the bond. Obviously, uh, what does staff recommend? Tom Travis? Staff's initial recommendation is to use the ban. The ban. Yeah. The ban. The ban. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to eat up the fund balances. Uh, we also want to make sure that our our ratings with the bonding agencies remain. And I think Angela can explain it better because there are some requirements from from the government financial municipal financial aspect that we need to keep some uh, amount as reserves in the fund balance and it's not that you need debt as well you know looking at constitutional tax and other things you, you need the debt excuse me you need the debt dan so that you can raise the taxes each year after you after you raise the two percent um constitutional tax limit so people start seeing 15 percent a year or 10 percent on each year after that along with their water and sewer going crazy the more you kick the can down the road you're going to have to pay the piper eventually we've been doing that for the last two years paying old debt and that's all we've been doing so just um the council did approve uh, to enter into a contract to complete the roof. We we just need to know where the funding is going to come from. In terms of these other projects, um, the sprinkler system, the sprinkler system at the Dubisky Center did fail its five-year inspection. I know we've talked about this a little bit in the past. Um, so this really isn't a project that we can delay. Again, it's more of a question of where is where will we get the funding for because. Um, not only did we not anticipate failing that inspection, it just was not included um, in our budget, nor were other capital improvement projects that we could swap this in and out for. So these are what we would consider to be mission critical projects that we 
really need to advance in the short term in order not to jeopardize um, our facilities. Um, also, uh, since we have a locked uh, contract, we have an executed con almost executed contract, which was approved by the city council for the roof. We need to capture the cycle because when the weather clears up, we need to hit, hit that as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So I, I, we do, we, I would like this to not to go beyond this meeting, so we need to have a resolution. So if there's no support for a ban, I guess you can have to use the fund balance. I mean, so you have was, a resolution for both. Okay. Oh, well, it was, um, I mean, it was voted on before and we did not get the five votes. Uh, Council Reach isn't here. I don't think his, I, I don't know, but I don't think his uh, changed. So you don't have, we don't have five votes. So it will have to be the fund balance. Let's do the resolution. Yeah, so council has both resolutions. You can choose which one. Staff is um, just requesting that council take action on one of them. Okay. I would request you do the fund balance. Okay, let's uh, do the resolution for uh, the uh, fund balance, Kathy. I will need someone to introduce it, move please it, second. and second it, please. I'll introduce that. Thank you. I'll second it. Thank Where you. Is it? So it's a resolution authorizing the city manager to appropriate the use of fund balance to finance necessary capital improvement projects in 2023. Whereas section C65 of the Augsburg City Charter permits the transfer of unencumbered balance in an appropriation made for one department or agency to another department or agency or the transfer of any unencumbered balance in an appropriation made for the division or office of other division or office in the same department upon written request of the city manager whereas council has authorized by resolution capital improvements related to the roof replacement at city hall and the addition of security system at the augensburg police station uh, whereas the city staff has identified the following capital projects as mission critical in need of immediate advancement. City Hall roof replacement at about $396,220. The Bisky Center sprinkler replacement repair, $26,780. Police Department security system, $12,000. Uh, Police Department HVAC at $45,000. Design and engineering for replacement of fire department roof at $20,000 for a total of $500,000 whereas it is necessary to appropriate a portion of the existing fund balance to eliminate a budget deficit. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city manager is hereby authorized to make the following budget adjustments to the 2023 budget. Transfer to the capital fund AA9509, uh, the original budget zero, amendment 500,000, modified budget 500,000, appropriated fund balance increase AA, Two eight one two five hundred thousand dollars. Uh, I'm going to move that right there. So, where, where where is this resolution? I don't have it. It's uh, second. It, it's right after the engineering report. If you if you're using your iPad, right after the resolution to accept the engineering report. You move it, Dan. So I just moved it. I'll say. Okay. Again, I, I think it's foolish to do this, but we got to have the critical work done. So I'd rather, much rather, bond it myself to the city. I can, I concur, Dan. I concur with Dan. I mean, I, you know, I'm not keen on exhausting our balance, but uh, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, everybody's throwing around terms that, that uh, quite frankly, could have been avoided in the long run, would have kept coffers in our, coffers in our bottom line, but I'm not gonna get into that because I'm not into the debate, but I'm all for a ban. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councilor Dillaba? Yes. Wait, before Councilor you do, oh. I'm yes? sorry. I, I, it was, there's a time uh, delay here. Um, how much does the court system pay? What would they pay for the roof? Forty some thousand, isn't it? it, it yeah, if, if they do, but it's 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 in the forty range, forty thousand range or less. It's not okay. beyond that. Do, do they have the whole top floor now? They do have the top floor now. Yes, they occupy a, a, a nearly thirty-eight 
to 40 percent of the building and we can only get 40 and we can only get forty thousand dollars is to help out yes because they also make a make payment i, I understand rent. they make a payment but they also they also make rents to us they pay a rent to us so i mean it's 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 good that they are at least paying us forty thousand on it generally um i don't think a renter would pay for right, a house to be uh, to, to re-roof somebody else's house but no. this is a good a good move by the court to offer us that help yeah. <clears throat> okay uh good enough okay. Kathy, would you please call the roll? So I'll start over, if I may, Mayor. Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes, even though I think it should be a ban. Councillor Powers? I share uh, Councillor Kennedy's sentiment, yes. Councillor Scamperly? And another reluctant yes. Mayor Scali? Yes. Approved. Your goal. Does anyone else have any items for discussion? And this brings us to citizen participation. At this time, anyone attending in person would like to address council. Please come down to the podium and you'll have two minutes. Uh, good evening, I'm Michael Julia. I live at 214 Hamilton Street. Uh, first, uh, I think uh, demonstrated by applause for the audience tonight, those here support and appreciate the city manager's decision to direct the chief to hire four firefighters immediately, as was demonstrated in the presentation last week. In the short term, it reduces uh, it, it reduces the net cost of fire service to the city, and as well reduces the amount of overtime, which is a positive impact to morale the fire department. Next, with regards to communication to the public, with regards to the increase in assessments, uh, I would suggest, besides emphasizing that they're based on the 2023 budget, that there also be a clarifying statement that the actual impact on property taxes is unknown until the 2024 budget and 2024 tax levy are determined. Uh, and then uh, lastly, with regards to uh, the impact of the increase in assessments and school taxes, as I've stated before to council, um, in the history of the school tax uh, vote and the school budget vote since the tax cap was implemented, the school district every year has stayed within the 2% tax cap. Their balance sheet is currently strong. I don't expect their tax levy will increase by more than 2%. Um, so they will not see a to overall windfall. Uh, at the same time, the increase in the overall assessment uh, to the city could potentially shift the percentage of tax uh, in total paid by the city, uh, a possible slight reduction in the town of Osagachi, slight increase in the city of Ogdensburg. Until the final numbers and equalization rates are determined, those numbers won't be available, but the school district will be communicating that information to the public when it publishes bridges it's may edition which they discuss the impact uh the discuss their budget for the 2023-24 school year um and we'll do different uh, uh, uh projections with regards to the tax levy uh with the new assessments and and i anticipate the school tax rate will go down but again there will be no windfall in school taxes based on this reassessment thank you Uh, my name is Wendy Hamilton. I've met some of you before. Uh, I live on Morris Street here in the city. Um, I'm very glad to hear of a new task force, but I would caution us to look at all of the committees that are already established and whether they're defunct or not, whether they're fulfilling what they were created to do, um, so that we're not duplicating effort. There are a lot of willing volunteers in this city, uh, but we don't want to keep going to the same well to do the same things. I would also suggest that we look at that previous community, community development plan and not reinvent that wheel, but have a, a new thorough look at that. I'd also suggest that we look at the FRB report. There were several recommendations in that report, uh, some of which had money associated with them if we were to implement them. 
um, one of the recommendations was with regard to the community land bank. And their suggestion was that we just lift and shift our properties to the community land bank. So when you talk about this Lafayette Street, I'm wondering why such a prized parcel of acreage isn't given to them to develop. Something to consider. Um, I raise my hand to volunteer to help in any way that I can. Uh, one place I would love to volunteer is to help update the website. It is frustrating to find information. Links are broken. Not everybody is you know, uploading their reports. So it does look like many things haven't happened in the last three years, which that could be, but there are also probably reports that are missing. So I know that the staff at City Hall are overwhelmed and burdened greatly, but um, I volunteer if if you need that help. Sounds wonderful. Wendy. Thank Have you. Have you had a chance to go in and see Mr. Cook for her yet? Oh, oh, I've met Dean. Oh, good. Yeah, we welcomed him early on when he when he first came. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else? Good evening, <clears throat> Dean. It's good to see you for the first time. Uh, I'm Greg McNamara. Uh, I'd like to talk about a couple things tonight. Uh, one being uh, my constitutional rights to be in this building were uh, taken away from me for about two weeks last summer by the past uh, city manager and Mayor Skelly. Um, I just would like to uh, meet with you sometime at your convenience to explain to you what took place and what happened. I don't want to get too far into detail, but it did indeed happen and I would like for steps to be taken to make sure that never happens to anybody again here in the city of Ogdensburg. Um, I want to thank you for your recommendation to Chief Stahl tonight. I think that's a no brainer. I also uh, want to go back to last meeting. Uh, Councillor Reesh brought up uh, the project going on next to the intake building. When that was going on, I actually live on the, the east side of that project. Um, my back deck is probably, it's got to be two or three acres from where the digging was taking place. And at my house, as the wind was blowing that way, it smelled like somebody, uh, not many people in here are probably mechanics, but it smelled like he took the differential cover off an old rotten rear end. It's very stinky oil smell. And uh, I bring my dog down there swimming often. And uh, I, I stopped during that point in time, but uh, one day I was down there and my dog being who she is ventured off and I saw the pit and I took a lot of pictures of what was going on. And it is a complete environmental disaster. That ground, I sent Mayor Skelly very shortly after I took them pictures, all of them. Did he share them with any of you? I never got any pictures. No. Well, I can go back in my archives and they were sent to you. Yeah, so we'll send I gave again. you an explanation. You didn't answer, through. but you got the pictures. I did not. Get uh, I reached out to Mr. Caprera and that Blue Water Development, the Blue Water Development place I called said they were a different one than the one that was uh, considering uh, developing here. But these, these we, selling uh, Diamond National, assuming that the ground doesn't look like the pictures I have, it's very, uh, you'd be ripping the developer off. That place is a contaminated wasteland and until it's dug up, nobody knows what that looks like under there. And uh, I'd be happy to show any of you the pictures. It's it's bad. I spoke to the DEC, they agreed with me. It is very bad. Um, I believe New York State funded to clean up and it's good they're cleaning it up. That stuff has to get cleaned up. It's the only way we can move forward. But let's not try to jump, jump ahead and act like that land's clean down there because it's not. And the fact that our intake building there is there is certainly a uh, a concern while this project continues. Thanks. Anyone else? Anyone uh, attending remotely? The first individual is registered as Chantel Eller, and I will unmute that individual now. It appears you are self-muted. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to echo what uh, Ms. Hamilton said about volunteering and assisting the town. I agree with the website as a newcomer here. It is very difficult to navigate and figure out who is available and what is happening. 
And as someone who's just starting to figure out what's going on in this state as a newcomer to New York State myself, um, I, I did pay attention to Governor Kathy Hochul's budget report that came out. And I learned that there was a large amount of money being earmarked for economic and regional development. And I'm, I, I'm not entirely sure how that's being approached but my understanding is it's being locked up with various representatives and there's only like one or two people, but maybe as a city, as a collective, we can start shedding some light on making sure that this region gets the funding that is apparently earmarked by the state for the kinds of things that we've been discussing. So I think that would be something that a grassroots initiative could benefit from you know, getting more people on board to start, you know, banging, banging some chairs and making some ruckus. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? I do not see any other hands raised. I will now make a mo motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss pro uh, proposed pending or current litigation. Second. Second. We do not anticipate any action following this session, so I will make them. Um, well, first we'll have this roll call. Kathy, would you call the roll? Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Powers? Yes. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scally? Yes. Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Approved. Um, now I'll make a motion to adjourn from. Uh, Break from directly from executive session. Aye. Yep. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Adjourned. Wait, hold on. I have to second that. Then you can all say aye. 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 Second. Aye. 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 Good. Thank you. May I have uh, Kathy Jock? Uh, I'll see.